What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode two of our whiteboard sessions. Uh, excited to talk today about leading with support. This is something that's very much an extension of our last conversation, which was uh, all about buyer outreach and kind of that cold email and how to construct that. Today, I'm gonna to talk about these two different hero statements and why I think leading with support in this second statement is actually a huge benefit to you as a brand. It's really gonna differentiate yourselves versus kind of the, the whirlwind of outreach that buyers are getting. So when we talk about leading with support, we're gonna break it down into these two hero statements, right? So one is I'm with brand X and this is why you should carry us. That's the way every single brand is reaching out. That is, that is the positioning that every brand takes when they are reaching out to a retail buyer. And what I wanna to do today is fight for this hero statement, which is I'm with brand X and this is how I will support you. If you're leading from a place of support, if you're leading from a place of, hey, listen, buyer, I understand you have a difficult job. Here's how I'm gonna ensure that you're successful in that job. That is such a refreshing take and such a refreshing positioning to approach that buyer with that I promise you, you will have much better results leading from a place of support than a place of selling 24 seven, right? So let's talk about kind of four bullets that I think break down this leading with support concept. So the first one is understanding the buyer's job. I think a lot of people that are listening to this are mostly emerging brands. Emerging brands, like that's five to 10% maybe of their annual budget, right? They know their big soda brands are buying, they know their big cereal brands are buying, they know their big paper towel brands are buying, like that's their staples. You're really trying to win in the margin, right? But that five to 10% is super volatile, right? It's constantly rotating out with brands that failed from the previous year or not even the previous year, last 90 days. And so you need to really not only sell, but de-risk yourself. And I think you de-risk yourselves through kind of what I'm gonna talk through now, and especially through your trade spend budget, right? Here's how we're gonna support you. Here, we understand what your job is, and we're gonna make sure that we're there to support you and your job as the buyer, understanding that that five to 10% is super volatile. Brand versus category story. So this is really big. So. When I was the, the sales director uh, at a company called Delighted by Hummus, we were the first chocolate hummus brand on the market. So when I led, uh, when I went into a sales meeting, I was never trying to tell this story. What I was doing was saying, hey, listen, no one's gonna come into your store and look at garlic hummus and look at roasted red pepper hummus and say, you know what? I'm not gonna buy the chocolate hummus because I'm gonna buy the garlic hummus today. Like that, that concept is not going through the consumer's head. What I used to say was like, hey, we're an incremental item. So people are gonna buy their garlic and they're gonna buy their chocolate, or they're gonna buy their roasted red pepper and they're gonna buy their vanilla. And that story really resonated because it was saying, hey, we're bringing incremental sales to the category. We are increasing the amount of sales that we're bringing to your category. We're not taking business away from anyone. We're expanding the amount of business you can do inside this set. And that story was exceptional. And I think if you can tell that incremental story, if you can tell a story that shows how you are gonna support that category, you are always going to win versus the brand that's telling, again, a story that's just based on, this is why you should carry us. Let's go into the Tradesman Playbook. You have to understand your Tradesman Playbook. You have to have a good concept of what works for you. If it's demos, if it's digital rebates, if it's promotions, what type of promotions work well for you? Is it BOGOs? Is it uh, percentage off? Like you need to be dialed in to what works for you, what's worked for you in past markets, past retailers, and you need to lead in with your trade spend playbook. I always see trade spend and support buried into page like 10 or 15 on a sales deck like that should be page two page three like hey this is how we're going to support you this is our brand and this is how we're going to support you and this is how we've been supporting our previous accounts like hammer that point home so hard and just make the buyer feel like this is a brand i want to work with like they know what works. And yes, you'll have to do trade spend activities that that buyer asks for. You'll have to show face and show that you want to participate, but you're still going to spend 75, 80% of your trade spend budget on things that you know that work for you. And that's critical. You need to understand those things and you need to have a playbook that works for you that you can rinse and repeat and continue to add on to as you go into other accounts. It should really be a living, uh, breathing document. 
And the last thing is gonna be ROI and CAC. Like you need to understand your numbers off of this trade spend budget. And you need to let that buyer know, hey, listen, we know if we run a, a digital coupon, right? We bring this back to WeStock. We know it costs us two dollars to acquire a shopper, so we're going to move a thousand units in the first month because we're going to apply two thousand dollars to the ad spend. Budget. And I think really understanding your CAC and the ROI on that CAC, uh, or sorry, just your ROI in general, like, is critical, right? You need to understand, hey, if I pull this lever. These are the results we're gonna see. And just being dialed into these four bullets, truly understanding um, you know, a story that's led with support, I think is the way to go. It's gonna differentiate yourself from everything else out there. And yeah, let me know any stories that you have about selling with support, what's worked for you from a tradesman strategy uh, standpoint, and we'll keep the whiteboard sessions coming. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.